Hi, I'm Dr. Shamrock, CEO of Exampro. I want to welcome you to our weekly blog on cases construction. It's really critical to appreciate that your case list represents 50% of your exam. By creating your ideal case list, which is easy to defend, you set yourself up for success before you even walk into your exam room. A bad case list can easily set you up for failure. We know that if you utilize Examplos ideas, techniques and tools, it can make the difference between becoming board certified or not. Hi everyone, thanks for joining us again this week. You're invited to call me or email me your toughest cases so that we can discuss it and help everyone learn good exam technique. Hi, it's a pleasure to talk to you. If, if I rupture a patient, which, you know, I think it's pretty Please, please don't say that in the exam. Yes. If I uh, rupture the <laughs> membranes on a patient, okay. Yes, uh, no, but membranes. we all do this. I'm guilty of this myself. But it, it, it shows that we're not looking at the patient as a person. So just, I know what you mean, but just this oral exam technique issue. I'm sorry, I'm sidetracking. Go ahead. <laughs> no, it's okay. Um, so if I rupture the membranes of a patient, should I go ahead and just and, and then start Pitocin after that? I mean, it's pretty obvious that I think a lot of people just do that routinely. Can I just write that globally as augmentation of labor as opposed to specifically writing rupture membranes and then, you know, I know I have to write Pitocin augmentation, but do I have to write... Okay, let, let me ask you a question. I'm guessing that a discussion on augmentation would be a good discussion for you. Is that correct? Yes. So how can you get that... What, how can we word it so that that discussion is more likely to come up? Maybe you should put down, as, again, as long as it's not on too many cases so that it just makes your cases just re highly repetitive, but maybe if you want to put down surgical augmentation and or surgical and medical augmentation, or in one case only medical augmentation, because it's a little more cryptic, and it almost is begging the examiner to ask, what do you mean by a surgical versus a medical augmentation? You understand? You, you're making a little more cryptic, and it, it's a little more, not so little, a, a moderately amount more likely that they'll actually ask you a question on augmentation. So you can just go augmentation if you want, you can mention RO, AROM and uh, Pitocin if you want, but I, w I would tend to say medical and surgical, surgical and medical augmentation. It's a little bit more cryptic and, and intriguing to the examiners reading your case list. I see. These are subtle differences now. These are not major, major things, but that's my thinking. Okay. And then I mean, does it make sense to you? Does, does it seem reasonable to you? Yeah, it does. It does. Okay. I At the end of you've got to be comfortable with it. Sorry? I, I just didn't know how specific we should be, you know, like I, I could write down artificial rupture membranes or I could write pitocin, but yeah, saying surgical and medical augmentation would prompt the question, so. It's more likely to prompt the question is what I'm saying. Yeah. Thank you for joining us. After doing this for 20 years, it's been my experience that those people who unfortunately fail do not fail because of knowledge. They fail because of poor exam technique. So please, don't worry about the knowledge issue. You've got it. Just practice and concentrate on how to present in an effective way in the exam.